Hey there, this is Ryan Kingsline, founder of ZBrush Workshops. So I want to share with you this really cool death to box modeling workflow. I mean, really simplifies our life as artists, meaning we are not going back into Maya, Max, XSI if we don't want to. Now, if you're a production artist, you're going to have your own needs and requirements that, that put you there. But if you're just focused on being an artist, you know, which is my main goal in life, then you don't need to go there because you're going to be able to sculpt this MP5K. All the shape, the form, the complexity that we have here. Let's just explode it a little bit so you can see the different pieces. All of this stuff is going to be really simple once you see uh, our workflow here. And this is the death to box modeling workflow. It's pretty simple and it's not really new, but it's got some new elements to it. And it's really part of ZBrush 4's core uh, thinking. But it's a part of their core thinking that you're not really going to find because not a lot of people really explain ZBrush from the algorithms up. And I can remember back when mesh extraction was developed. That was during my time at Pixelogic in the development team. And mesh extraction, you know, is one feature. It does some cool stuff. But in theory, as a concept, the ability to extract a mesh, or let me say it this way, the ability to create a mesh from a shape eventually made its way into Shadowbox. And that's all mesh extraction is. It just pulls geometry directly from a shape you paint as a mask or you leave with visibility. Shadowbox creates an environment for you to paint your mask and then it creates entirely new geometry. And then there's a whole new world waiting for you out there with new features that I'm sure Pixelogic's going to develop. So all of that rambling aside, I want you to see this workflow, get a sense of, of how this operates and how you can create hard surface stuff like this really quickly and with a sense of craftsmanship to your approach. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the workflow, about the steps that are involved in that workflow, and really what you need to know or expect out of every single stage. Now I cover all of this stuff in depth in the Sculpting MP5K workshop. So check the description of this video to uh, go to that page and you can sign up for a uh, for our email list where we'll give you a couple of goodies. One of them is access to the Understanding Brushes workshop and that's a workshop I did a couple of years ago and it's really one of the workshops that I created ZBrush workshops to uh, to be able to make you know it's the reason why I created ZBrush workshops because th that level of understanding that level of uh, of training in ZBrush didn't exist and uh, because of my time in development that's a relatively simple thing for me to put together and our community needs it because when you understand ZBrush on an almost algorithmic level like you understand it to the point where you're creating your own brushes things like that then you are mastering this application and then you're in a position to take it farther and start to just master your artwork and no longer fight with the tool so again a little more rambling but uh, let's take a look at some of the sculpting MP5K workshop uh, workflows and see how you can put those to use for you and uh, and see how simple they are. The beautiful thing about this workflow is that I stay inside of ZBrush and that means that I spend more time sculpting. Sculpting anything, you know, it's just more time. So this entire thing is sculpted inside of ZBrush including the straps. Now in my book, Sculpting Realistic Game Characters, I used a different tactic to create the straps and uh, that was to use GoZ and Maya, mostly just to show off one of the uses of it. Uh, let's get rid of that um, temp leg there, yeah. So this is the uh, the gun made for the book and this one was really what started me off on this whole death to box modeling uh, workflow because you I have a long history of not wanting to get out of side of ZBrush and this workflow is kind of key to that but 
the element that's really significant, the, the thing that I really love most about it is the, um, is the artistic thinking part of it. The part where you have to uh, start to think about things different than an engineer. You, 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 you think of it like an engineer, but slightly differently. Let me explain what I mean there. Uh, this holster, for example, or the, the platform to the holster. So let's just go into solo mode. Okay, this is uh, probably stage two. This is stage one. So what is this? Actually, this I would say is stage, uh, yeah, this is stage one. And what stage one is, is a polyplane. Simple as this. Converted into a poly mesh, okay? And then scale down or move down, skew down, however you want to look at it, so that it had some rough general proportions. And then I extract out a shape where I make a shape. And that's the beauty of it. This is it's really cool, intuitive process. Let's see. We're gonna need more, so I'm gonna divide it one more time. Symmetry is on, but I need symmetry in another direction. Probably in Y. Yep. And now we just go in and create some some basic shape to this. Mask pin. And come back in with mask rectangle. Drag Alt out. And we create all the little slots that are going to be part of the platform. So we had to, of course, analyze the platform. I had to analyze it, not we. I had to analyze it, get in, figure out how this thing is shaped. And that's one of the things that's really exciting about it because it's, you know, it's a process of discovery. So you end up with this plane shaped about like this. And uh, in this case, what we did was invert the mask. And then once you've got this, once you've got you know this kind of general shape, then you go in and you extract it. But the key thing is, is you extract it with zero thickness. And that gets you this kind of smoothed version that has the topology to handle what you're going to do. It has the edge loops. That's the beautiful part of this extract. Because when you think about box modeling, you think about edge loops. Edge loops are the thing that you need to find another way to do. That's what this is doing. So with extract, it's creating those edge loops. And now, suddenly, with a little bit of craftsmanship, we don't really need to work so hard. Uh, so that, at the end of the day, gets us a form that we then adjust slightly. So you can see we just pulled it out. And that's all it is. It's just a mask and I'm just pulling things uh, pretty much straight up and down. That's it. Nothing else to it. Once you've got that done, this is the last mystery part of it. And this is the part that everybody forgets. It's old though. This is an old part of the matrix. You can see this in some old school Meets Meyer tutorials. Uh, he was the one who really pushed this and really pushed it to the forefront. So, how do you add some thickness? That's again something you would do inside of Maya Max XSI. You just extrude it. Here, you do things slightly differently. You store a morph target, and then you pull it back in space slightly. Okay, just a little bit. And whatever the distance is, the difference between where the morph target is, so here's my morph, and there's my shape. Whatever the distance is between those guys, that's going to be the thickness. So you click Create Difference. Come up here. Where did it go? Morph Difference. Chances are it's going to be inside out like this one is. So you just come down to display and flip it. And there you go. So it has edge loops. The edge loops describe the form here. And they allow it to be, you know, allow you to have these nice smooth contours. 
So that stuff's really significant. And then from here, you can do a couple of other things that almost make this just crazy easy. You come in and hit Polish. And that looks pretty nice all by itself. All of that done with a sense of craftsmanship and just approaching the tools slowly and methodically. In this case, we used two tools. We used, uh, let's say, we used... Um, extract and we used a morph difference so extract and morph difference those two features together give you a solid workflow but it's not the only two features that really work well together and that's the key thing to know about ZBrush so ZBrush is designed so that it's this web of tools that you use. In one case, it's going to be extract and uh, the uh, morph difference. In the case of the MP5K workshop here, this shows us some uh, some other parts to it, some other aspects that are also equally kind of significant for figuring all of these things out. So if we just take a look at the uh, gun itself one of the things that people have a hard time with and one of the things that we really address in this workshop is how do you create these complex forms you know you've got a cylinder you've got another cylinder and it seems like this the top cylinder is interpenetrating the bottom cylinder slightly but then you also have a box right here and this box needs to fit in and become part of your thinking and you know you you have to treat it all as these simple forms first all of this stuff needs to be done in terms of your conceptual framework right like think foundation level drawing class you're breaking this down into simple forms you see what i ignored is this stuff up here these kind of tertiary or really secondary details some of the welding the nuts and bolts some of this shape happening in here uh, this whole little indent in here which is for a um, if I remember right a telescopic zoom uh, or sight if if you're gonna think about all of that stuff right then and there you're gonna die it's gonna take too long so you gotta simplify Think about the white shapes. Think about the shapes outlined in white. And you build them slowly, very slowly. And uh, you, in this case, will be using four tools or four workflows that are really important. So you, you start out with shadow box. And that's where you go and you make this kind of amorphous cylinder. Okay, that's step number one. Step number two is when you go in with the clip brushes. Everybody asks how you use the clip brushes because it leaves some artifacting and occasionally they have problems. You use the clip brushes to just kind of create these nice clean edges and you have to use them very, you know, there's a way to use them. So you will take this amorphous shadow box form and you'll turn that into basically a machined edge and all of the pieces are going to be machined. So you're going to have them all interpenetrating each other like that. Then, step number three is you remesh. And you start to combine this into the actual pieces so that you can start to add this secondary details. Let me give you just a quick look at what I mean by that. You can see the receiver here. So this is all one piece sorry the receivers down here and all one piece all one piece but they didn't really start out as one piece this is a good example so this did not start out as one piece this started out as several pieces and I used shadow box to create one cylinder and uh, then we pulled from that cylinder this shape right here and we had a secondary cylinder coming down all of these guys got remeshed and then project all. So we talked about remesh. Stage number three. Stage number four is project all. Transfer your details. So you build it in this stupid, simple way. 
you remesh it, you project all. That, in a nutshell, that's the workflow. Because once you've done project all and you have these parts, then you're using the brushes. You're using the sculpting brushes to make this happen. So make sure you check out our Sculpting MP5K workshop page. Sign up for the email list. We've got some bonuses in there for you, such as the Understanding Brushes workshop we did a while ago. And uh, we'll keep you up to date on future products. And we'll also release a couple of little extra tidbits about this workshop. If you're not ready to sign up and you really just want to learn more, get on that email list and, and we'll keep sending you some information about it. So. Good luck with your sculpting. Have a good day.